chicken run. Considering how chicken is one of, if not the most eaten animal in the world, I think it's safe to say that the life of a chicken is not really an admirable one. In fact, their lives in coops and farms can be fairly comparable to prisons, which was what Peter Lord and Nick Park of Ardman Animation exactly thought when pursuing to make the studio's first feature film. Since some farms can be perceived as a prison with a one-way trip to death row to a chicken, why not use that as the basis of a poultry-themed prison break movie? Kind of like if you take The Great Escape but turn everyone into a chicken. And as a result, when the movie escaped to theaters in mid-2000, it immediately became a landmark in the studio's history with great praise and, as of 2021, earned the title of the highest grossing stop-motion animated feature of all time. In fact, its impact is so great that it's been said that the movie played a major role in the creation of the best animated feature category at the Oscars because it just missed its shot at getting a best picture nomination. Sounds like a pretty big deal for a movie about runaway chickens. So now that we'll be going in to see the chickens get out of Mrs. Tweety's farm, will the feeling of watching this movie be like the feeling of freedom? Or is this as much of a phony as a flying rooster? Let's find out. The Story If you know Armin, then you're most likely familiar with their Wallace and Gromit shorts. As their most renowned works in their library, what made them so beloved and become stop-motion icons is the combination of suspense, comedy, and crazy action. Those factors were put to the ultimate test on the studio's first feature film, and the result is a story that's masterfully engaging and exciting. As the whole concept is a chicken-themed prison breakout, it allows the writing to be creatively free to play around with the genre and take it as goofy as it likes, but still maintain the intensity to really grab the viewer's attention. One of the movie's key tricks to have it be so gripping is the world building, how the farm feels just like a prison with the way that the Tweeties run the place and emphasize how the life of a chicken is anything but glamorous, where all they do is just lay eggs in their little corner until Mrs. Tweety decides to chop their heads off. And if they get out of line, they end up being treated even more like garbage and used as a lesson for the others. Another important factor is how it really raises the stakes. It was already a matter of life and death, but the situation gradually grows more dire as the need for their demise becomes necessary now that the farm has a pie-making machine. Which ones? All of them. And because of how unpleasant the environment is and how their lives are in danger just by living there, it makes it all the more motivating to see them get out for a better life. After all, Unlike other prison movies, these chickens did nothing wrong. All they've done is be chickens and that's enough to be caged by Tweety and literally be stuck in a coop. It also gives more attention to when they try to escape and how things have become more extreme than they already are because of how a possible death is coming at them sooner than they may expect. So they might as well go live free or die trying. But it's not just the need to see them escape that fuels the engagement. The movie also takes a bit of time to get to know the cast and presenting their personalities, allowing them to apply their own brand of effective comedy and make the calmer moments when they're not trying to get out more pleasant to watch. She's back. Admittedly, the one criticism I have here is that, as it is more of a character-driven escape movie, it can be guilty of making its narrative foreseeable, especially when the foreshadowing gets pretty obvious like with Rocky's identity as a flying rooster and his evolving relationship with Ginger. Even with an original premise, it is guilty of using recycled material to get through its story to transition through the next thrilling scene. But it does make up for it with a creative execution where the moments themselves may be foreseeable, but how they are pulled off isn't, and they really help build more of the characters and their motivation. With the simple concept of chickens escaping their prison, 
the story really makes the most out of it to be as exciting as a real escape plan going well. The Animation the charm of Armin is that their animation may seem simple and cute on the surface, but there is so much more that happens that can really pack a punch. It shows how they really wanted to make their feature debut big, and the animators captured that beautifully to show the intense scale of everything from the perspective of the chickens. As Nick Park is one of the leaders of this production, the character designs have his signature style of the prominently round eyes and the big mouths to widely express themselves, and this doesn't even include the character animation that can manage to greatly convey emotion both subtly and comically. Sure, the chickens are unapologetically cartoon characters instead of looking somewhat like the real deal, like the dogs, the people, and maybe the rats, but it helps the movie to have its own distinct look that emphasizes its British nature. Considering how Nick Park's style is so associated with one of the most acclaimed animation studios in England, why not use it to help define how this is English cinema? You'd hop in the old crate and tally ho! Chucks away! Give over, you old fool! They just want to count us! But more so than the characters that do manage to look distinctly different from one another, What's even more impressive is the backgrounds, where the team created this entire chicken farm that also delivers the feeling of a colorless and melancholy prison. While it may seem like a place where the chickens can just sleep and lay eggs at first, the ladies also added some hidden passages and hideouts in their coop so that the Tweeties don't find out what they're up to. But that's not all. This is a case where the movie has tons of surprises in store, especially with the animation. Some of the best visual moments are when the chickens get themselves in giant elaborate machinery with their own complete functions that result in some of the best scenes of the film, and even some of the most intense action that they get themselves in. A great example is when Rocky goes to save Ginger in the pie-making machine, as they avoid all the deadly obstacles so that they could get out and warn the others. Speaking of the action, the montages where the chickens try to make their escape or learn how to fly is when the animation takes center stage and really present what they can do in terms of comedy and creativity, highlighting all their endeavors and failures of trying to get out of the farm or flying their way out, but mostly end up as clueless as before. Relax, we're making progress. Really? I can't help feeling we're going around in circles. Even after producing several more features, the animation of Chicken Run is still some of both Armin's and Stop Motion's best and most enjoyable. The Characters What would a prison escape movie be without the prisoners to root for their freedom? The characters of Chicken Run are literally a whole coop of prominent personalities, each making quite an impact every time they're on to the point of stealing the show. Granted, I won't say that they are the strongest written characters, since most of them rely on their one personality trait throughout the whole picture, and some are mostly just a walking running gag, but they do make the most out of their one trait in order to be their own bombastic personality with great voice acting that really sells who they are. Starting off with the escape mastermind herself, Ginger is the most determined to get out of the farm for a liberating and better life. She is so focused and passionate about leaving that she can be so to a fault, where she can be the most serious and forgets to just have fun. Sure, she does have a good reason to take this seriously with the circumstances there, but it would take someone like Rocky to make her realize that it's for the other chickens as much as it is for her own freedom. And that bunny. <laughs> she really packs up fun. Is there a problem here? Have we flown over that fence? Not quite. Then there's a problem. The other prominent poultry is Rocky, an American rooster who claims to know how to fly. Amongst all the characters, he's the one who showcases the most development. As he arrives at the farm, he acts more of a hotshot and a ladies' man who's hiding from the circus. But the more he spends time with the chickens, the more he grows fond of them 
making it even more difficult to tell them his secret, and if trying to teach them to fly and maintaining their hope for freedom is worth continuing. On a side note, it is pretty weird for me to hear an American accent coming out of a Nick Park-style Aardman character. Like I said, the design is so distinctively British, yet Mel Gibson's voice makes Rocky sound like he's bringing out the DreamWorks side of the film. And uh, where is that exactly? Oh, uh, just a little place I call the land of the free and the home of the brave. Scotland! No! America! <gasps> but as they try to get out, their biggest obstacle is Mrs. Tweedy, the straightforwardly cruel owner of the farm that wants to make bigger profits, but instead of just relying on eggs, she wants to take it one step further by turning the chickens into pies, all while her bumbling husband, Mr. Tweedy, is on guard to make sure the chickens aren't up to something. As for the rest of the coop, they help give more life to the whole flock, as well as supplying most of the comedy with their own charisma. There's Fowler, an old rooster who always reminisces of his time in the army, Mac, the genius of the group who helps execute the more elaborate escapes, Bunty, the strong type that's often cynical of Ginger's plans, and Babs, the clueless naive one that's always knitting. Also, there are the two rats, Nick and Fetcher, who are an additional comic relief duo that smuggles tools and whatever the chickens need from the Tweety's house in exchange for food, especially eggs. Yes, they are meant to be con men, but they prove to be quite handy for Ginger, Rocky, and for the humor with some fun commentary. Some characters are mostly for the jokes, some characters are mostly for the escape, but they are all there to help enhance the picture to become one exciting ride worth emotionally investing in. Chickens may not know how to fly, but this movie certainly does. Chicken Run is not just Aardman's first animated feature, but also one of their greatest accomplishments. By taking the prison break genre and adding more poultry into the mix, the movie turns this escape plan into a greatly engaging story, creatively intense action, amazing animation, highly amusing comedy, and a whole cast of characters that add a lot of laughs and a lot of personality, all combined to form a one-of-a-kind exciting experience that is virtually impossible for any other film to duplicate. As a landmark in animation, this is an absolute must-watch, but also, I recommend this one if you're in the mood for some great fun. Need something to laugh and enjoy some great animated action? Then this will certainly satisfy your needs. Even before getting into this review, I knew I was going to have a blast with this one, regardless of how many times I've seen it previously. And because it is still able to leave me amazed after watching it, I am happy to give this one the Animat Seal of Approval. Even if the chickens never want to go back there, I know I'm down to do this all over again! This is Animan, and I want to start things off by giving out a huge thanks to Alan Oliva, whose amazing support on Patreon allowed him to get some amazing rewards, including this one, where he got to ask me to review Chicken Run. And what a blast it was to check this movie once again. Even if it is for reviewing purposes, every time I check this movie out, it is always so much fun and it is really easy to get yourself invested into all the action, into the comedy, and just everything it has to offer. It really is that kind of film that's just so much fun, regardless of what the situation may be that you're in, for the reason why you would want to watch Chicken Run. It's always a good choice. But anyways, now that we are done with that movie, it is now time that we shall go and move on to the animation hat. And uh, by the way, 
If you guys would like to be like Alan and you want to go and support my work and get some amazing rewards at the same time, including but not limited to seeing my videos before anyone else, then all you have to do is go to patreon.com slash animat. But at the same time, if you guys would like to go and uh, suggest an animated film you would like me to review and I would put onto the animation hat, then all you have to do is write me an email at animatsreviews at gmail.com. All right, so uh, let's see what we got here. What the? What? I'm, I'm sorry, what happened? What? Where? Hold on a sec. What even is this place? <laughs> Happy to see you here, Animat. You? You did this? <laughs> of course I kidnapped you. Remember that disturbing animated films video we did a while back? Great video, good times. The point is, I need you to revisit one of them. But not just a random one that we've talked about. I mean the most dis disturbing one of them all. That's right, we're going back to Korea to revisit one very unfortunate middle school.